Well, the museum really began because there was a wealth of material and stories out there that were not being collected or preserved. So I found people who knew where collections were hidden in bunkers, in basements, attics around the East Block. There was a flood outside of Dresden and there was an entire collection of the official party newspaper of East Germany. We knew we only had a few hours to act. We got in the van, we raced down there, and we were able to pull the things out just in time. And they're now here at the museum. When people think about the Cold War, they think of terms like propaganda, Iron Curtain, Cuban Missile Crisis. But there's so much more to it than that. Behind this wall were millions and millions of lives. We have a collection of a border guard from Checkpoint Charlie, whose job was to train all the other guards and how to detect people trying to cross the border illegally. The wall is something that is universal. We all have walls. Some of them are physical, some of them are invisible, but we've all got them. The pink linen has become one of our iconic symbols here at the museum. And somebody crawled up to where the sculpture was and used Western fluorescent paint to make it look like a clown. And this was seen as a symbol of the beginning of the end. And in fact, it was one month later to the day the Berlin Wall fell. The collection is so vast, it's about 75,000 works, that whether you're a poet, screenwriter, or you're writing a book, this is the kind of place where you can learn what is the Cold War? Was it actually a war? What was life like behind the Iron Curtain? What should a museum be? Museum is a word based on the, the, the root word of muse. It should be there to inspire us. And that's what this museum is about. You should come here and find your own path and your own